This is an example of a mug that I made to explore and test out all the different types of surface design. So when you are using your surface design, you want to think about the overall unity of how you're including these types of design. So I was experimenting with some pressed texture. I used the cap of a pen to press into my clay. I was exploring different types of spacing, if they were touching and close together, or if these were kind of scattered and farther apart. I also had another type of um, cookie cutter that I was able to kind of repeat the same shape at a larger scale. I like to use this curved end when my piece is in leather hard to carve these different designs. And again, I was thinking about different types of line quality and mark making. I was thinking about repeating these types of directional lines to create unity throughout my piece. This is called slip trailing. You can put slip in a squeezy bottle like this. This type of clay has grog in it, so you'd want to sieve out your slip before you put it in a bottle like this. This nozzle is very, very fine, so all of that grog would get clogged in the nozzle. But this is a fun way to add designs that are raised. This is called water etching. You can do this with shellac or Mod Podge, and I like to do this with stencils, and that way I can get a really clean edge. Water etching doesn't work great with the clay with grog. You can see how when you sponge away to keep this area raised, I have a lot of this rough texture from the sand and grog in this clay. This example is bone dry. It is ready to be fired, so be very, very careful when you're handling bone dry clay. You want to do your surface design in leather hard. But think about the overall type of design. It might be a lot to include all of these options. I wanted to show you the different options that you have with surface design, both with carving, press texture, and with some raised options. This piece was darted with a double pointed dart, the almond style here, and I had three single pointed darts at the bottom to make the bottom smaller. I started with a cylinder. When you glaze a piece with texture, the glaze will pool in recessed areas, making that area darker, and the glaze will break over raised areas, making that glaze thinner. It is nice to have different types of textures in order for your glaze to be more dynamic.